Take a breath on capstone, right? Capstone, you're, this is not about getting a grade. This is not about how far you are. This is not about comparing you to other people. Everyone is going to be at a different point in their capstone, and that's okay. The point here is to say, hey, you guys are all busy. You all, not all, some of you guys work full-time jobs. Some of you guys are at different points, uh, have different availability for time commitment. That is all okay, right? The point with capstone uh, check-in tonight is to say, hey, this is the point in the program where we start easing up on the concepts. We've got one new concept tonight. Everything else we're going to cover tonight in the blog project uh, is, is going to be review, right? And it's an opportunity to, to throw up the red card, throw up your hand and go, whoa, 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 you just said a concept. I've heard you say that 14 times already. I still don't get it. Please go over that again. And that's the whole point of the blog project is that when you get into the blog, it is meant to be a review, right? Uh, this is meant to be a breathing point. And now and every night from here on out, we're going to save at least 15 minutes, if not 30 at the end of class, just to work on capstone, to ask questions, to take what we did in the blog and try it on your own. So we are going to kick off with uh, a capstone check-in. We are running it like a stand-up. So you're going to do a quick little demo of where you're at, what you have working. And then your goal is to answer three questions. What did you do since the last check-in? Where are you at in your capstone? What are you working on in this next upcoming week? And do you have any roadblocks, concerns, concepts that you need help with? just any additional resources, kind of where are you stuck if you are stuck anywhere. Again, we want to frame all of this in the, the context of full stack app, right? So where are you with your API? Where are you with your database? If all of that is up and coming, that's fine. We just covered those concepts for the first time. Right? We just started working with SQLize. We don't expect you at week 18 to have your app done. The last quarter of this program is when the most work on your capstone gets done. And we reflect that in the curriculum where we start doing less and less new concepts and more and more time to work on your capstone and be available here. So I don't want you to panic as, as this capstone goes on. You're not going to get a grade here. I'm going to be uh, typing notes in the background, but it's just on how can I follow up with you to make sure that as an individual, you're doing well. I didn't want to put the pressure on you to say, hey, go find a time outside of class to schedule uh, for your capstone presentation, because I know that that, that can be tricky with all of your, your schedules. But when we get to graduation, right, when we get to... Uh, what is it, September, early September, whatever date it, it is. Um, it's very easy to be so heads down in your project and forget that you have to present. But the presentation here, thank you, Ariel, September 8th, the presentation here is not about showing your capstone. It is about showing off your journey throughout these whole 24 weeks of everything that you have learned throughout the program. So I don't want you to think that graduation is a capstone presentation. It is a capstone presentation about what you have learned through these 24 weeks and the cool project that you have made because of all of the stuff that you learned, right? I know it's the, the cheesy quote about, you know, it's about, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey, but that is what your presentation should be about. The destination is about the capstone, but the journey was the, the, the whole project of how you got there and what you learned. So there will be non-technical people in the audience. You, all you need to do is show off what you built and then talk about the journey of, what, of, of how you got there. However, we're going to focus in the next couple weeks on the actual destination, on getting something presentable for your capstone. And then in that last week or two, that's when we focus on the journey and the slides and the presentation and all of that stuff. So I know you're panicking now, but that panic is better to panic now and take the remaining six weeks in the, in the program 
to panic with with your peers, panic with everyone who's going through the same thing, because that panicking now will give you great practice for when you actually get up on the stage in six weeks and talk about the the uh, the journey, not just the destination. With that spiel over, does anyone have questions? I call dibs. I'm going last. It's okay. Well, we will we will put you last, Nicole. Does anyone have questions about Capstone? Questions about where we're at in the program? Questions about anything that popped up? The good news is there's I have no plans for homework. So at this point, your only homework is Capstone or catching up on previous assignments if you're behind on those blog project I did today. I spent three hours taking our, our project setup that we did, what, on Wednesday? I spent three hours building out all of the features. The final version of the blog is in, uh, is in today's outline. So I link to all of that of everything we're going to build. We're going to build a full CRUD application. We're going to go over uh, authentication today. And the, the plan is for here on out, to do a little bit on the blog project, make sure you understand those concepts. The blog project, because it is not homework, I am highly going to encourage everyone to take a step back and say, do I learn better by doing, or do I learn better by just watching it be done and take notes and try and do it in my own capstone? If you are someone who learns by doing, I will be taking breaks. I will be doing the polls. But if you are someone who went, I've already seen all of these concepts before. This is something that I'm just going to take notes on and try it on my own at the end of class. That's completely fine. We're going to stop class by 8.15, if not 8 o'clock. And we're going to leave that last 15 or 30 minutes for go try this. I will stick around for that, that full time. I will answer any questions that come up. I will be stopping during class, but the pacing of class kind of changes here a little bit. Now, from here on out, it is all about how can we practice to get you in your capstone to make sure those concepts are sinking in, to make sure everything is working. Does anyone have questions before we dive into capstone presentation? And when I say presentations, don't panic. Do not freeze up on stage. Do not worry about this being in front of other people. This is just about where you're at and what you're planning on doing in the next week on your capstone. Okay, I can feel the tension in the air. Uh, you want somebody to go or no no no. i was just just leaving the floor open for questions um would you guys let let's do a poll to see uh <clears throat> Max, when you're done, can I get co-host, please? Yep. Hey, Max, I was going to ask. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, everybody's pretty much like ahead of me right now, uh, you know, as far as the capstone. So I was going to ask if I could just go first and get it out the way since I don't really have much to show, but I can, you know, say like what my next steps were yeah well i'm actually going to I, ring. <laughs> yeah i'm gonna give everyone the option because I, I don't really have a preference either way so i just launched a poll in zoom to decide if we want random order or if we want to just go in the order of whoever volunteers so i will let everyone decide on that <laughs> <laughs> don't want people to think I'm going to be unfair here. I will hunt you down if you uh, are not in class tonight and make sure that we get some kind of capstone presentation. Um, 
but want to make sure that it's not a, <laughs> affecting class. Uh, so, uh, okay, I'm not even going to uh, keep the poll open for long because it is overwhelmingly whoever volunteers can go. So, uh, Corey, if you want to kick it off, go for it. I'll go after Corey. I ain't got much, but I'll go after him. All right. All right, uh, Max, I don't have to share my screen if it's the same exact thing from last time, do I? Nope, that's fine. Just just tell me kind of what you accomplished since the, the last presentation, what you're planning on working on next, and what are your roadblocks or concerns or concepts you need help with? All right, cool. Yeah, so I mean, uh, since that last presentation a couple of weeks ago, uh, honestly, I've been working on like just catching up on classwork or stuff since I was so behind on that. Uh, as for the capstone, though, for my next steps, uh, as I do get more caught up on, uh, you know, classwork and stuff, uh, for the next thing I actually wanted to do was for my rows and my uh, column, uh, where I have like the shirts and the items that I wanted to like separate those so i had like skateboards and t-shirts and all that together um i know you mentioned uh e-commerce format so uh that's something i want to do is get those into like categories and stuff so i've been uh i bookmarked a couple of like you know videos and stuff and uh on how to do that because i'm not using wordpress obviously so uh yeah that was some of my next steps and uh one other thing i wanted to do uh i mean that's honestly that was it yeah as far as i know now awesome <laughs> any any things that you're struggling with any concepts that you want to go over again um anything that that you know would be helpful if we touched on in class um uh not really. I mean, besides some of the, the stuff that I sent you earlier, that's pretty much it. But uh, I've been catching up on like some of the JavaScript and whatnot, and I'm definitely getting like a better understanding of it. So, yeah, but that is uh, besides adding that, uh, adding JavaScript, you know, to my project is something I want to do next as well. Awesome. And the best way um, that that will be uh, for adding JavaScript to your project will be getting it to that full stack nature, right? Getting the database working, getting the fetch calls working. Um, we're going to do that blog project or we're going to start on the blog project tonight um, where you can see how we can like pull in blog posts, right? And you may say like, well, I don't, I'm not doing a blog. Um, but abstracting that knowledge out and thinking about it as, oh, well, he's going and making an API call to get the blog posts, but I could make an API call to go out and get my comments or, or to get my products, right? And maybe instead of having a title and content, uh, my products would still have a title, but it may have, you know, the price of the product or uh, a description or stuff like that. So um, we're going to, uh, you know, taking those concepts and abstracting them out to your project, I think will be really helpful. Um, but thank you, Corey. That is the perfect format. So if everyone wants to shoot for that in terms of what you do, what are you working on next, and do you have any roadblocks, we will go from there. Good. Thank you. Uh, Larry, go ahead. All right. So I haven't done too much um, since the last check-in, but when we had the one-on-one, -on -one, you showed me how to um, grab the cookie so I can use that to do the fetch request and get the data that I need out. Um, some of my plans is to actually go through the data. It's really intense um, as far as like all the different categories of stuff. So I need to um, get inside the data, break it down so I can make my models for my database. Um, you know, my roadblock has just really been uh, time and, uh, you know, the life stuff I have going on, um, you know, since the 28th. And I know, you know, that I lost my sister, but I lost um, my brother, one of my brothers, um, my fiance's uh, mother and like two other cousins I don't even know. But so it's been really hectic. So my mother-in-law funeral will be Saturday. And then after that, hopefully I can get to the grind and focus. But it's been uh, it's been time consuming and tough with everything going on. To totally understand that. And I'm sorry for all of your losses there, Larry. But 
Um, thank you for the update. And it, it sounds like uh, what, when you do have the time uh, for it, it sounds like you're on the right path. Um, not that that is any more reassuring, but um, sounds like you've got your your uh, next steps laid out pretty well for you in terms of database and, and model and, and all of that stuff. So um, when you can turn your attention to it, I think that um, I think you have the next steps and uh, hopefully after this weekend, uh, life turns around and gets a little better for you. But so sorry for all of your losses. Thank you. Who would like to go next? I can go. Sure, go for it. I'm going to share my screen. So this is what I had the last time. Um, and so I wanted to do the uh, favorite things. And so I knew that we were going to start with the blog on, um, we started on Thursday. So Thursday after class, I um, created a front end and a back end. Where did my back end go? In the back end. And um, Sunday during office, well, I added the, I took the HTML from the original that I started with and I um, added it to uh, the app.js and I took the original CSS and I added it to the CSS. So that's why it looks the same because I was able to bring that information over. The next thing that I need to do is I need to create a database. I need to add the SQLize. I, I think I need to add the SQLize to the back end and figure out um, these are placeholders, figure out what um, is going to be behind um, or what is going to be in place of uh, these pictures. Um, so, yeah. Awesome roadblocks. I still, I'm um, in the process of going through, um, still go, I'm doing the West boss and doing the JavaScript. So I, I'm more familiar now. So I'm not as unfamiliar as before, but just going back and revisiting React and APIs so that I can prepare to call the things that I need to call through the API so that it can come through my database to be presented in my blog. Awesome. And just a note there of, yeah, I, I'm pushing the blog a lot, um, but important to recognize here that your capstone does not need to look like the blog at the end. You know, this is something that we're just teaching concepts through. Um, so I, I don't want to queue up blog as, you know, like, oh, your capstone needs to look like this. Your capstone can, can stay on track of whatever your initial thought was. The idea here is that with a blog, we just are able to um, pull in some of those, those concepts and some of the practice with the blog and, and um, be able to use them in your capstone project. So I don't want you to uh, take your projects and mold them around the blog. I want you to do that in reverse. Take the concepts from the blog and and practice using them uh, in in your own capstone. But um, Christy, it sounds like you're on the right track with the the uh, eye on that full stack goal, which is definitely where um, you want to be headed. Um, now it's just a model, a, a matter of getting your database models thought through, right? What things do I need to store in my database and how is that going to flow uh, from the database into my front end? So um, narrowing in and figuring out, hey, what do I want the final product to look like? Uh, what information do I want to show up on the screen? Um, that is where you want to be focusing in on. So locking that down now is going to make it much easier to go and implement. Um, as opposed to doing the full stack implementation and, and getting to your back end and starting to build the model and going, 
oh, I don't actually know what I want to show up for, for each page or the home page versus the favorite thing page or whatever it is. So um, narrowing down on that and figuring out, envisioning what you want the final product to look like is going to make the rest of the steps much easier. Yeah, I kind of wanted to do a blog. So oh, it, it I, I, worked. I, right, my, well, I'm just saying me. I know that you were speaking generally, but I kind of, I was, the, the idea that I had was even from the bike, you know, like more blogish than appish because of me sharing um, like different bike routes or, so I was just going to be sharing, it, it would have probably ended up being in a blog style anyway, because it's something that I've already done or information that I collected that I'm sharing. So it just, it's coincidence, but. Sure. Yeah. I, I don't want to discourage the blog format either. If that makes more sense, that that's fine. But um, kind of thinking through whatever that final vision is, um, is going to be very helpful. So if you're kind of afraid right now of capstone progress and you're like, I, 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 and you're locking up, I'm not saying you are, Christy, in particular, but um, if you're at the point where you don't know what the next steps are on your project, just sitting down in front of a piece of paper or a whiteboard or whatever it is and saying, this is what I want the final thing to look like sometimes makes it easier to work in reverse from that final product as opposed to, you know, going step by step, like we're going to do in class and making our way to the final product. So um, if you are, if you are, if you feel like you're stuck right now, um, sometimes envisioning that final product and working your way back makes it much easier than just going step by step moving forward, if that makes sense at all. But awesome progress, Christy. And I think you've got your next steps uh, hammered in and, and honed in. So I think you will you will be good for the next check-in. Awesome okay. progress. Who would like to go next? Nicole, go for it. Unless you have a question. Um, no, I can go next. Uh, I was going to go last, but I can go next because sure. I already have my... Okay, so, so far I have just been working on, here I'm gonna share my screen. Um, I'm sorry, one second. So for me, um, I was struggling a bit with, cause I felt like my idea was so big and I was trying to think of like a minimal value product. So this is kind of, can you see my screen? Yep, you're good. Okay, so yeah, this is kind of what I wanted it to look like overall <laughs> okay um it's a directory so this is kind of what i worked on this is what basically like my wire frame so i did like a whole i found this website but i did like a whole thing of what my login page would look like this is like what the services page will look like i'm trying to zoom in um it's not the best type of app never mind <laughs> but this is kind of what i wanted so I like my about page i'm gonna need a like this would be like basically the on click and stuff like that. And this is the template I used to help me picture it out better. Okay. So that's kind of what I have so far. And then um, this is what I got so far with my code was the, the just the nav bar. Um, and then this is my code. And I was able to like, this is, that's why I needed the wireframe because I was able to like, I knew what I wanted within the, like little squares and on the pages. So I kind of like went in and just did the basic stuff to and connected them all together. Um, so I could like be able to like do stuff. My next goals are to start checking some of those things off my box, like try to just work on the first page and get everything clicking and moving to each page. And then I will be able to, like I can, then I'll maybe be able to style something or add pictures and things of that nature, but that's where I'm at in my capstone. Awesome. So after styling, um, I would say think through kind of one page to focus on after the homepage. Um, I think focusing on the homepage is is the right next goal. Um, but then saying, all right, maybe for that, that page where you have the table showing up, let me try and get my back end set up and a, a model set up to have all of the information in the table. And maybe that's the one place in my capstone that I focus on like the full stack nature of, of making the API call and having that all of that data show up in there. 
Um, I think the other thing that's a major win for you, Nicole, that uh, just one-on-ones I, I can give you a shout out for is you've done a good, a really good job of getting your HTML structured in your React app um, and getting different components set up. And um, I know I've been working with Zach a little bit on that. And I know that that's come up during um, office hours and one-on-ones as well. So uh, blog project, we're going to get a little bit more experience of how do we have our different pages? Where does our code go? Uh, practice after we create React app, what does all of that setup look like, all of the router stuff, all of that. So um, those little things that are like, oh, I just have to get router working are, are not insignificant wins, right? Getting that working is a major step forward in terms of actually being able to put your code in the right place. So um, something that I, I know you already have working, Nicole, and is like one of those things that you can't really show off because it just works, but at the same time, having that set up really puts you in in a good spot. So um, awesome, awesome work there. Um, I would say you've got your right next steps in terms of focusing on your homepage, uh, but then set your kind of longer term goal for getting to that table page um, and uh, and get the data fooling, flowing through your back end and your database and all of that. Thank you. Perfect. I will. Uh, any roadblocks for you, Nicole? Anything that you feel like you need more resources on or any additional help, stuff like that? Um, I think I got a good understanding of how the code works. So I really have like put homework on a back burner and I've just literally been bringing my homework to different um, TAs and say, hey, read this to me. Um, or can I try to read this to you? Because I, I definitely understand what you're doing. Like I can catch right up, like, you know, but um, I think I was a little bit intimidated by writing it by myself. But once I had some people explain to me like, hey, like why are we using temper literal again? Or how is it, and how everything works out together? I was able to see it clearly. So now I just, um, just got to really catch up on my homework really. But that's the only blocker right now. Homework. Awesome. Um, yeah, so we're gonna start uh, setting some time uh, in class aside so that you do get do get more time to work on capstone in class or homework, right? That the end of class, if you've got questions on homework, I'm happy to spend uh, spend some time there. Um, but uh, really glad that you're getting that understanding. Really glad that you're, uh, you know, that intimidation of writing the code versus, you know, following along with me is one of the most frustrating things as a teacher because it's like, I don't know how to teach it better, but at the same time, like getting to that understanding is the important part, right? Um, so really glad that uh, you're you're spending the time on doing that. Continue to reach out to TAs and and help with that. Um, Thank you. Um, Sean Jay said, "Can you post a link to your um, what you just showed tonight, Nicole? Um, I like draw draw IO, but that looks cool." Um, and the Nicole would love for you to, to, to post a link, uh, but also Shranjay, any tool that works for you. Um, I know a lot of people love PowerPoint, right? Or Keynote on the Mac or whatever. If, if you know PowerPoint and you make slides, um, if that is a tool that works for you, do that. If a tool that works for you is getting out paper and pencil or a whiteboard or whatever it is and just drawing it out there, that's fine, right? Whatever tool works for you, I don't want to stop you from using it. Um, and if Nicole has a tool that, that works that she wants to share, go for it, right? It, it doesn't matter. Um, the main goal here is saying, hey, this the capstone is a huge project. So whatever tool I can use to get it out of my head um, and and into some visual form uh, may help clear some roadblocks uh, and some intimidation of how big the the project is as a whole. Okay, who would like to go next? I could go. Sure, go for it, Doug. <clears throat> uh... All right, so since the last time, oh, I got the bar in the way. Um, so I was focusing heavily on the, the map because I realized that's kind of central to my app of like mapping away through a grocery store. Um, so I spent a lot of time building 
not the app, but like building out how, an interface to get the map to work. And I've got it now so that you can pick any two points and it'll give you the shortest path. So that was, that was kind of a milestone. Um, but if you have to go from the entrance and hit each of your grocery items and then back to checkout, it's not just one point to one point, it's one point to the next point to the next point to the next point. So I started trying to write something that would figure out the shortest route through that. Um, and I was showing Max my progress or, or lack thereof. And he mentioned something called the traveling salesman program uh, or uh, challenge or traveling salesman. Um, and, and that's like, uh, so there's a traveling salesman. He has to go to like seven cities and then back to his own city. And how do you calculate the shortest route to hit all of those and get back? And apparently this is a problem that has been unsolved for decades. I mean, I guess they have some algorithms that are pretty good or else there wouldn't be mapping software, but apparently they have competitions every year and you know, like Google and Apple send their best engineers. So I started to feel a little bit better that I wasn't getting it, but I started looking into this set traveling salesman. And one, one solution is if you have a bunch of points, if you, just take every single possible combination of point to point, get the distance of each one of those combinations, you'll figure out the shortest distance. So that's the, the trial and error solution. <coughs> so so I, built, I built that where it'll find the shortest route by trying all the routes. And that's pretty good. But as you add more points, it starts to take a little bit longer to solve it. And so right now for, for five points, plus the I have a starting point or ending point that are always the same. Um, to solve, so there's 120 ways that you could get through there. But as soon as you go up to say, like 10 items on your grocery list and you hit go, you've got three mil, on three, over three and a half million possible ways so it would take it days to figure out the optimum path. So <laughs> I built all this to decide that's not gonna work. Um, I started researching other algorithms and there was one called the genetic algorithm that, that rather than trying all of the possible solutions, it just takes a, a handful of random solutions and then, um, takes, it gets the distance for each of those, takes the best one, and then uses that as a seed to make, to shuffle that solution a little bit, 10 times. Then you take those 10 solutions in hopes that one of those was shorter than the last best one you have. And you keep taking your best solution, shuffling it, and hoping that one of them is going to be better. Um, so here is... Don't forget to stop the other one. Oh, yeah. Thanks. That'll go on all night. And I'll wonder why my computer's running slow. So the, on the left is the uh, genetic algorithm. On the right is the brute force that we just saw. So in the blink of an eye, the genetic algorithm solves because it takes so many fewer tries. The only problem with this is as it gets more complex, it's still very fast, but well, that one's actually pretty good, but it will more and more often come up with ways that you'll see like, oh, it crossed over itself. Like you definitely should have gone from 10 to three to 11 and two should have gone to four. So it's, it's pretty good, but it doesn't always give you the ideal path. Um, so I tried, I tried a few more refinements and, and, and stopped myself realizing that I could just spend the whole time on this. Um, so I decided I'm just gonna go uh, 
probably with the the genetic algorithm or I just made one that just gets each next closest point. And it, so I won't necessarily be the fastest route, but um, I'm going to leave it there so I can move on with the rest of the app. So that that's a lot of what I've been doing since the last time. Awesome. What are your next steps? Um, well, one of them is I seem to have inadvertently deleted the index HTML from my React. Is there a way to get that back? You can create a new React app just called something, you know, like test or, or you know, temp or something and just copy the index.html or, or it's you're missing index.html in your public folder. Oh, is that where it is? Oh no, it's there. Okay, huh. so then you haven't deleted it. You just weren't looking in the right spot. Okay. Uh, well, I'll save that for one-on-ones. For some reason, it, when I, it shows you the index page, but that we can do that another time. Uh, so next next steps, I uh, so I took you know our requirements and I tried to make a walkthrough to think that would help me figure it out, which helped a little bit. I, so I've started just making a to do list of things that I know I need to do and trying to knock them off one by one and just add more things as I think of them. Awesome. Love the running list. One thing, Doug, that I would suggest you you practice with, <coughs> cross things off, right? Once thought, you get, that's the blue, the blue ones are crossed off. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, you're doing so much work on the capstone. I think it's important to take a step back and go look at all the all the stuff that I did get done, right? Like, and doing that on a running weekly basis, I think is a really nice confidence boost to say like, Hey, this is coming along, right? Because that impending deadline of, of uh, graduation coming up can be scary. Uh, but when you can see the progress you're making and actually just take a minute to not, not stress about what you have to get done, but what you've already gotten done. And this goes for everyone. I'm not trying to, to narrow in on you, but um, is, a, is a major stress reliever to say, hey, I am making progress and I am getting things done. So this is awesome. And I think an awesome opportunity for you to talk about the journey, not just the, the end result, right? Because it's going to be very easy for you to roll into your, your capstone and say, hey, here's the route. But just finding a way to narrow this down into the into like 30, 30 to 60 seconds of here are the different algorithms. Here's what I found about traveling salesmen. Here's a little UI that I, I built to, to understand the genetic algorithm. And hey, now we're on to using the genetic algorithm and, and uh, how it's impacting my final result, right? So finding a way to practice on condensing that down uh, will yeah. be really helpful uh, for, for your presentation um, because we will slow clap you off the stage once you hit <laughs> your, your time limit. Uh, I, I half mean that as a joke and half am, am serious for um, we... I, I forget what how many minutes you have, but uh, getting practice on presenting for graduation is something that you shouldn't be worrying about now, uh, but something to keep in the back of, of your head of, hey, I will have a time limit at, at graduation. And if people want more details, you know, they can always come up to you afterwards. Um, so uh, awesome progress. I think you're on the right track. I think the requirements list is a huge step in the right uh, direction. Um, now just think about is pages the right format for me? Do I print it out and actually cross things off? Do I use a tool like Trello? I'm not dissing pages. If pages is working for you, by all means, stay at it. But don't be afraid to try different techniques of, you know, printing it out or post-it notes or Trello and, and see if any of those uh, are more in your, your flow. And if not, keep going on pages. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, thanks. Um, any roadblocks, any concerns, any uh, concepts that you want a little bit more practice with? Um, everything. <laughs>
Okay, no problem. <laughs> I do think that I know I'm tooting my own horn here a lot with the blog project, but I do really think that that is a good recap on everything. Uh, we're going to touch on authentication tonight, which is probably the only real new concept. Um, and then everything else is going to be practice in the front end, practice in the back end, using state, using API calls, using SQLize, all of that stuff. So um, I, I am really looking forward to working on that project, but want to keep the train running here. Who would like to go next for capstone check-ins? Zach has his hand up. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Go ahead, Zach. So this is what I have so far. I pretty much had to take my initial screen that I made previously and convert it um, so that it's compatible with SQL. Um, so this is my code that I have here. I started working on creating pages for if I want to log in, if I want to reset the password or create a profile, these buttons don't work yet. So I'm going to have to work on uh, making these pages functional. And then I have to have a page for um, actually searching to see which movies and TV shows are available uh, on which streaming service. Um, so I'm going to have to get to the API part of it eventually. I did start making a database just to have usernames and passwords for, so that you can log into it, but I haven't gotten to work on that yet because I was working on uh, moving this, like converting this, getting this all set up so that it uh, looks the way it did on my HTML, so. Yeah, I think that's about it. One thing to note there is that you um, might have a lighter backend. Your backend might only do like username and password um, because you want to invest your time into like making the API call to the third party service to go get the data, right? So um, don't panic there if you're like, oh, I feel like my backend's really small, but I've got all of this code for like actually getting the API call to work and show you know, where to stream it and all of that stuff. And that's completely fine. Um, so just one thing to note there is don't feel like, um, don't feel like it, it needs to be more um, just because, you know, of requirements or whatever. Um, but I think you're on the right track. I think if you prioritize, uh, we're going to do a little bit more work with a login page today and get that, that functional um, over today and probably a little bit of tomorrow. Uh, but after that, if you want to dive right into, you know, getting that search page working, um, I think that that's the, the next right priority um, because that, and then you'll be able to make the API calls to the service and get all of that data and, and go from there. Um, and at that point, I think it will be a motivator to feel like all of a sudden it feels more real. It feels like, you know, the project you set out to build is actually working. Um, so I would uh, definitely prioritize getting that search page working and, and the API calls. Thanks. Any roadblocks, anything you're concerned about, anything you would like more practice with? I definitely have to go back and watch the office hours video for API. I've been meaning to do that since it got posted and I haven't really had the opportunity to, but definitely have to look more into um, APIs. Cool. And I will say that if you're finding, like while you're working on your capstone, if you get, let me actually just share my screen. Um, if you get to the point where like you find a snippet in a office hours or in a class or whatever it is that you find really helpful, um, please, please, please share it with the class. I, I don't even need to be in that one, but if you drop it in your back channel, if you drop it in C3 students, whatever it is, um, if you're in YouTube, and you go to, I need to pull up one of our videos so I don't get any copyright trouble. But if we like just pull up office hours or whatever video, 
and you're like, oh my God, on 18 minutes and 44 seconds, Max said something that like clicked and made my whole capstone work. If you click the share button here, there's a checkbox for start at. If you check that and hit copy and send that to students, uh, to, to your fellow students, it will start the video like right at 18 minutes and 50 seconds. Um, so if you do find a snippet that is particularly helpful or in anyone's video, right? It doesn't have to be one of my videos, any video on YouTube, um, feel free to share that and be like, hey, not sure if anyone else is stuck on APIs, but I just watched Ryan's class and he said something at two hours and 15 minutes that just made sense. Here's the link. Feel free to, to share that out with other students as well. I'll definitely keep that in mind. Thanks. Max, did you only hit share for that little box to pop up? Yes. And then the button in there was, was automatically a button at the bottom? That's yeah. That I'm yeah. sorry. So if you're in the YouTube video, oh, no, come down. OK, so if you're in the video and you're at, you know, whatever, um, mm -hmm. when you click the share button down here, there's a check at button, uh, start at. And if you hit that checkbox, you see it adds a question mark T equals. This is actually the time in seconds. Uh, 18 okay. minutes and 31 seconds is 1,111 seconds. Um, so as long as it's got the question mark T equals, you can just copy that and paste it wherever you want. And when okay. someone else opens that link, it will start right at 18 minutes and 31 seconds. Thank you. That was good to know. YouTube pro tip. Well, I'm I'm going off of my phone. I don't know if anybody else was next to mine. Where, nope, where are they? go for it. All right, I can just um, just talk about what I was doing. Um, I mainly just had the um, front end stuff, almost not even. I don't even want to say almost completed, but I had the pages that you could link to the main page, the um, about us, the merchandise, and a contact page. Uh, we have some pictures that um, my girls and I, um, that we were uploading for the merchandise or things that we'd like to see. So it might not be the actual merchandise, but it will be um, things that are similar um, to what they would be interested in um, doing or having on their page. Uh, from there, I need to work on um, adding you know, prices in there so that when you click on it, it brings you something, um, you know, the totaling section um, like as if you have a cart I need to decide on when you do click on an item is it just going to maybe enlarge a little bit or does it bring you to a completely separate page with that item plus all of the details about that item um, and you know I guess all of the back yeah, all of the back end things um, one major roadblock well, two major roadblocks. One is to, I need to review more about the back end stuff, everything back end. I just, I don't know if I'm just kind of getting in my head about it or what. Um, and then the second thing is that I have a, I keep having this pull to completely start something new. And I don't really, I don't want to do that um, for time reasons. But at the same time, in my mind, I had like another idea that I wanted to try out. So that's where I'm at now. So the good news is you can always try ideas out after the program is over, right, of new projects. And that True. pool is something that you will face the rest of your career in programming is wanting to work on something new. Um, so it is an important thing to battle. Um, the other thing I will note is one-on-ones do not end at graduation. You get you continue to get access to one-on-ones, um, certainly from me and, and likely from the other TAs as well. So um, don't, don't feel the urge of like, I want to go do that new thing. So I, I still have, you know, access to the resources. Um, but I think your other roadblock is, um, is certainly a, a legitimate one of reviewing the back end and, and focusing on next steps there. Um, sometimes, uh, just breaking down the steps, make it much easier to get started. So, Hey, I got to get Express set up. I got to get SQLized working and I need to make a model of what shows up. And then finally, mm -hmm. I need to make that data show up in my front end. 
So if you kind of break it down and, and don't think about it as, oh, I need a whole backend, I need a whole API, I need a whole database, and just break it down to set up Express, set up SQLize, create a model, and have that model have some data show up on the front end, breaking it down into those steps may make it easier um, to, to make your project feel a little bit more full stack because you don't need to change everything that you've already done on the front end. You just need a way to capture that data and store it in the back end so that you can have that full stack flow. So sometimes having your end front end done actually makes it much easier to capture all of that data and make it work in in the um, in the back end. Okay, and I think that's what um, when we do have our one on one, um, our next one on one that I wanted to focus on is what you had mentioned, and then so um, I noticed that I'm kind of getting stuck with. Um, you know, uh, when we have done our projects or things in class and, you know, the API, how I understand it more straightforward is, you know, pulling information from, from like a, like a third party or from a different area or something. But for this one where I'm kind of like building it myself, I think I'm, my brain is kind of getting warped there. So yeah, well, that's a really good note of, yeah, an API is is about data flowing from a, a database or a third party or yourself, right? So um, in this case, yeah, we are building our own API, um, mm -hmm. but you can think about our API as literally just the connective tissue between the front end and the database. So if okay. you think about everything as like, okay, the data is sitting in my database, how do we use the, the back end? in order to get that data to flow via JSON into my front end. Um, mm -hmm. That may make it a little easier to get started on that. Um, but okay. if not, the good news is that the curriculum is definitely headed in that direction to, to give you more practice. Thank you. Who would like to go next? I'll go to get it out of the way. Go for it. Um, I don't have, I'm not gonna share my screen. I'm gonna just explain. I really don't have much um, down. I started my draw.io um, and pretty much like I just been trying to catch up on homework and everything like that. So I really haven't really focused on my capstone and I wanted to get with my mentor. Um, I haven't met with her yet. So um, she said she'll be able to help me with that. Um, but pretty much uh, the things that I do need help with is um, I know the information that I want to get and I've been using the Syracuse data to basically, um, you know, to, to put into my project. But I do need to um, go back, like Zach said, and Chantina review the API um, videos. Um, that's my main thing. And then also I'm getting React, but I feel like once I lock down with the JavaScript a little bit more that um, everything will come together. I just feel like um, I'm just so stuck on the back end that it is, um, it's kind of holding me back right now, but that's pretty much it. So Shanjay, one thing I would recommend is um, try and set out one goal, right? Because it's very easy to go to identify like, oh, backend's holding me up. I just really need to get the JavaScript and then this will click. And then once that clicks, something else will click. But um, take, a, take a step back and just set up one very small goal, right? Of, hey, maybe I, I know all my data needs to work in my backend, but let me just set up Express. Let me get a hello world working in Express, right? And don't worry about what comes after that. Don't even plan out all of the goals. Just set that one line in the sand of saying, I just need to get a hello world working in Express. And once it does, then set your next goal after that of, okay, now I need to get SQLize working, right? And then be able to go from there and pick up that momentum. But if you look at everything as like, I just have to do my capstone or I just have to get back end working, that is such a big goal that you're going to psych yourself out over it, right? So um, just setting out that small goal of saying, I just need to get Hello World working in Express, or I just need to get my homepage done on the front end, or wherever you want to uh, decide to start, start on one goal and only one goal, make sure the goal is small enough, and that will make it actionable, and then you'll be able to actually do it. Okay. 
Thank you. All right, I would like to go until 645. Whoever does not make it uh, by 645, we will spill into tomorrow and do a shorter capstone check-in just to make sure that we do have some time uh, uh, to, to work on the blog project. Um, who would like to go next? I'll go. Go for it. OK. Um, so since we last spoke, um, I don't know if you can see my screen. <laughs> yep, you're good. Okay. Um, I have the Safe Child app. Um, I am debating with scrapping it all together. Um, and so right now, this is all that I have. Hold on. Um, I have a login page, and I'm trying to make sure that I'm on it. Um, And the login is for the forum. Um, I don't know how to actually connect it to my forum yet. And so that's something that I have to work on, but that would be the icon of the person. Um, I also have the homepage itself, if I can get back to it. Um, let's see here. So much that it is confusing me. Okay. Like that. I think this is it. Okay, this is the home page. And so far, I still need to bring in my APIs. So I have like an area where I'm guessing I'm gonna put each API. This is just sort of like the layout of it. And so where you see test is where I'm gonna pull in information. Um, here is an example of some information I've pulled in already from greatschools.org. Here's a map. And when you click on it, it gives you the schools. Um, I have to adjust this and resize it, but you're supposed to be able to look up schools as well. Um, I have to add links here to pull in the information. Um, I've linked my forum, but it's not the best. I have to work on that. Uh, and that's what I've done since the last time that we spoke. Uh, as far as what I need to do, um, there's a lot that I need to do, mostly all backend stuff. I have to um, connect more APIs from the Syracuse Crime Blotter, um, the Offender Registry, I have to link local background, a local background search app that I found. I'm going to link that. Um, I would like to revamp my color scheme and layout, and I need to create a database for the forum and create login authentication. Cool. So I would say definitely prioritize on that and choose which one is going to be the most important for you, right? So I think from it's a really tough call because from my perspective, the site's probably going to be the most useful if you pull in the crime blotter and the offender registry and, and kind of like the third party APIs. However, it's going to show the most level of technical knowledge if you build out the database for the form and work around the user experience on the on the form. So um, those would be my two kind of top priorities of deciding either whether you want to integrate uh, more third-party data sources or whether you want to focus in on the form. Um, that's not to say that that the rest of the priorities aren't important. Um, and I think that they, they would all make for a better site. Um, but just choosing, hey, which one of these am I going to focus the most time on um, is going to make it easier to feel like you're making progress on the project overall. Uh, so I, I don't want to like dictate which one that that you um, dictate which one you should work on. Uh, but just thinking through which one of these is like most important to me is going to make you uh, be able to feel the progress a little bit more. All right. Thank you. Uh, but awesome work there. It, it, you're definitely on the right track. Um, I would highly encourage you to push scrapping out of your head. 
uh, because you've got a great foundation and a great jump start on everything, right? So like the pages are all set up, you've thought through this idea, you've got the layout done. Now it's just a matter of deciding where you want to invest the time into, um, whether it's the third party APIs, whether it's the form, whether it's uh, you know, more of a styling focus, whatever it is, there are so many great ideas of where you can go next up there. Um, so just identifying which one you want to sink the time into um, and try and block out the others as distractions, um, I think will will uh, mean that you've got more progress on your project overall. All right, thank you. Who would like to go next? I'll go if you want. Sure. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> sorry, is that custom mute is a laptop? Yay. Okay, there we go. Um, so I don't have much to share um other than roadblock which for me right now is time and health <laughs> I kind of have a lot going on and it's been becoming increasingly obvious how far behind I've, I've been falling um I only just finally wrapped up JavaScript homework um from the free code academy uh so um I definitely am in the middle of trying to carve out more time to dedicate to capstone and catching up on homework assignments um, so time is my enemy right now, um, but I did try to take a run at um, Trello to try to put some kind of game plan in order, but unfortunately, I, I, I'm still stuck with my where I just grab random pieces of paper and just kind of scribble random notes, so <laughs> I'm going to stick with that until I can find a way to organize my thoughts, and um, I'm in the middle of trying to figure out when would be the best time to take a leave of absence from work to try to figure things out because um as as we've spoken in private work has been getting kind of crazy <laughs> um and a little toxic so um yeah so that's not much progress on the capstone end but um just more trying to figure out where my priorities are awesome yeah and and <clears throat> i think that i'm going to give you the same advice that i give dan danielle of there's so many different directions that you can invest your your time. So mm -hmm. setting out that one goal and, and uh, you know, I keep on, I've said this to Sean Jay, I've said it to a couple of different students, but like put one thing ahead of you, right? Because that list is so long um, and there's so many different places that you can spend your time. So setting out that one actionable goal, whether it's like, I want to get my homepage done or like, mm -hmm. I want to just get one API call working in my front end or you know, I want to get the the back end connected to the database or just whatever that one goal is, even if it takes four hours to get through, setting out one thing and being able to cross it off the list will make the next step so much easier. So um, focusing in on that, I know uh, homework is a good one to, to say, like, I'm just going to do this homework until it's done. I'm not going to worry about anything else. Um, try and take that same approach for your capstone of like, I just want to get my homepage done, or I just want to get my express server running and connected to the database or trying to set out that one goal, even if it takes a couple hours to do it, setting the small goal is going to is going to help you build momentum rolling forward. Yeah, definitely. Just because it seems a little overwhelming. And um, the way I've been knocking out the homeworks is just I'm seeing everything just being so much. And then while I'm at work waiting in between trucks where when I'm auditing the post office, is all I, I'll sit there and I'll just have all these things running through my head. I'm like, you know what? Let's just do one more exercise in JavaScript. And that's how I finally got it done really, really slowly. <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep doing that because um it's just too easy to get lost in like the whole like, oh my God, I gotta do this whole wall of overdue assignments, not to mention capstone. So I'm definitely gonna be doing the one step at a time just to get things done and get moving one one step at a time and and balance out your homework right because we you don't want to get to the end of the program and go oh, i got all my homework done and i mm -hmm. still don't have a capstone so um <laughs> when those thoughts are racing through your head of like oh i've got 15 minutes let me try and get something done maybe just start building out your capstone homepage, right and saying hey this is html 
Um, this isn't things that I need to do the homework in order to understand how to do. This is like basic HTML. So let me just get a page, you know, my home page done. Um, or let me go build a login page if I need that for my capstone or try and just set out that goal and break down the page, not even to like, oh, I need to get a home page done, but being like, I need a nav bar to show up. So let me just focus on my nav bar. And in these 15 minutes, if I can just get one more link showing up on my nav bar, that will be good progress. So um, part of being an engineer is knowing how to break down those huge tasks into small components. Um, because even me, Mr. You know, code at a, a million miles a minute, um, I still go step by step. I still go line by line. I still mm -hmm. set my goal on one feature and don't move on to the next one uh, until that one is done. So breaking down maybe your homepage into, into smaller parts and focusing on that um, mm -hmm. may be the right foot in the door for getting your capstone started. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm actually going to cap it off here. I think we got almost everyone today. Um, if you did not go today, we will um, start off tomorrow for the the couple people who we couldn't squeeze in tonight, um, and we'll uh, do the the same update. So now that you are done, now that you mo well, most everyone is done, feel a little bit better is this more nerve-wracking give me some feedback on how this review went i think it helped a lot um to give me to even say what to focus on next how to break it down even though i was like oh i'm gonna see him in a one-on-one -on -one, just um the feedback that you gave today for me honestly helped and listening to what you've told other pe other people good anyone else want to share yeah, I think it helped to see one that, you know, I'm not in this position I'm in by myself. Um, and then two, you know, putting it out there so there's accountability. Um, and then, you know, the reassurance that, you know, it's not about necessarily where you are, but we do need to get the process going. So I appreciate that. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm glad that that came across because the goal is not to scare you in terms of uh, you know, oh, I'm behind or, or oh, I, you know, it, it isn't about where you are. It's getting that jump start going. Right. And I think it's also helpful to see that you are all at different points in your capstone, but you're all still far off from whatever the final product is going to be. And even though it's scary that there are only six weeks left, these six weeks are all about you know, making sure that, that you have the time to work on the capstone and that you're making progress on it. Um, so I, I, I'm very glad that Larry, you, you echoed that sentiment. Um, does anyone else have any questions before we dive into the blog tonight? Um, I just think that it was interesting to see, uh, you know, where everyone was and to feel and to realize that everyone feels like similarly the same we all feel the same way but we you know and not only do you all feel the same way but you i've called I, this is not the first cohort right i have taught this cohort two two other times and everyone is always at the exact same spot right you're all at different spots in terms of what you've gotten done but the feeling is the same across cohorts Week 18, last cohort, everyone was panicking. Everyone was worried about where, where their, their capstones were at. Some people had the front end done. Some people hadn't started on the back end yet. Every, but no matter what, everyone is panicked of saying, we don't have enough time to get this, this finished. Um, and that's okay. Everyone look, if you look back at the first cohort or the second cohort uh, and their capstone presentations, everyone had something to present. It doesn't matter if it was the whole MVP that they initially set out to build or if they focused down on one feature that they were really proud of and that's what they showed off, right? Doesn't matter. It is about the journey. The journey is not over yet. You have six more weeks to go. Now we just turn up the heat a little bit on the journey and make sure that the, the cruise control is set to the right speed, right? Um, and so that is that is what class will start to feel more and more about that. Ariel said, crying in panic. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that stage, but hopefully not for another couple of weeks. 
Ariel, did, I know you hate it when I put you on the spot. Ariel's our TA for this week, by the way. Um, did, did you have uh, anything that you wanted to comment as someone who has gone through this capstone experience most recently? No, actually, as you were speaking, I was typing out similar things and you just happened to speak faster than I type. But everything's pretty much what's been lined out. I had a serious, life got in the way hard last cohort for me. And it meant extra one-on-ones and when you can find the time. And that, even if that means make a phone call or have Max record it and talk it over and go over it later. But to go through it and do it step-by-step. There were some days that the, the front page was so overwhelming, I would just work on the nav bar or alignment or uploading images or something along those lines. Um, if I knew something like database was going to mess me up, save that for the one-on-one. Schedule them multiple in a time once each week, three in advance if I had to. But the panic will set in and then it'll suck and then it'll get worse and then it'll get better and then it'll get worse again and then you graduate. So it works out really well. You guys will get through it. It's not it's not as nasty as it feels being on the spot, but we had to be on the spot every week, every other week, I think, for my cohort. Yeah, so it sucked even worse then. You guys are doing really good for where you're at. All right, how are we feeling? I say we take an early break. We'll be back at let's say we'll we'll say 720 we'll give everyone a full 30 minutes to decompress if you would like to take any notes or jot down things for capstone next steps i would encourage you to do it at the break but let's take a, a quick breather we'll be back at 720 and we will dive headfirst into the blog project see you guys soon all right so I'm actually going to show you what we are working towards before we actually get started on it. So I'm going to show you the finished product of, of what we're going to uh, be building out here. Um, so let me pull up my VS code and get these two front end and back end fired up. Do not panic. You don't need to be opening any anything yet. I just want to show you guys what we are working towards. So do not start following along quite yet. You're going to see my beautiful, beautiful front end that I spent hours and hours designing. Uh, if you didn't pick up on my sarcasm yet, this is what we're building. This is what we're working towards. Uh, it's going to show the blog post title, the blog post content. I share your screen, my Max. This is what we are working towards. We're going to have our blog post titles and our blog post content. There is a login button down here. And if we are logged in, I'm realizing I did not build a log out button. We will build that in. When you log in, it's going to take you to a username and password field. If you try and sign in and have the wrong password or don't have a user account, it's going to say username not found. If we do sign in, it takes us to our admin interface. And then in our admin interface, we are able to make a new post and we'll call it uh, from class and say uh, content goes here and post it. That not only shows up, but we've got the ability to edit it. And if we post it and go back to the home screen, we now see from class content goes here. So this is everything we are working our way towards, right? The ability to get to a, an admin screen to be able to edit and delete, only people signed in will be able to make posts. Um, and then on the home screen, it will show all of the posts. Any questions before we dive in? I do, we didn't, I came back a little late. We didn't start the process of getting to this, right? Yeah. No, nope, just showing off what we're building. Um, Showing off what we're building, we have not started with file setup or anything like that yet. Any other questions? Okay. 
Okay, with that said, let's get the file setup going. So in tonight's outline that is in Canvas and is also in the schedule, if you have that booked, um, bookmarked, there is in week 18, day one, there is a link to the starter file. So if you click on that, it will pop open in GitHub and actually download the zip. Um, if you want to start from week 17, day four, and your own code, you are welcome to do that. Um, but this uh, this week 18, day one is what I'm going to use to get started. So I'm going to go to my week 18. I'm going to make a day one folder. And stand by. I need to fix this really quickly because it's going to annoy the crap out of me. Try that again. Okay. In my week uh, 18, day one, I'm going to grab the zip file that I downloaded, move it into my day one folder, double click on it to open it. And I'm going to fix this so it's at the right level. So the goal here is that we've got a day one folder. In our day one, we've got our blog back end and our blog front end. From there, we are going to open both of those in VS Code. Hopefully, this is getting pretty comfortable for you guys and familiar at this point. I'm going to grab the front end, drag it to VS Code, move that over to the left, grab my back end, drag that to VS Code, move that over to my right. In my server.js, I'm going to open an integrated terminal. I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to npm i. I'm going to do the same thing on my back, on my front end. I'm going to open an integrated terminal, npm i. And once those are done, I'm going to npm run start. That should get me a bunch of SQL in my front on my back end terminal. And then in my front end terminal, if I npm run start. It should pop open my browser to a nice blank white screen. I am going to start live shares for both of these. Post them in the Slack channel and in Zoom. I'm going to open up my app.js and my server.js. And I'm going to leave it there and poll and make sure everyone is following along and has your files open if you are following along tonight. But I'm going to stand by what I said last night. Uh, I'm sorry, what I said earlier in class today, which was... Um, if you would like to just go uh, uh, for the ride, this blog project, you do not have to turn in. This is not homework. Um, if you want to just follow along as we're working with it and take notes, that is completely fine with me. I will take breaks, though. I'm not in speed demon mode. I'll, I will take breaks and make sure everyone's following along if you would like to. Yes, I would like to follow along. <laughs> Sorry, Max. Um, what did you uh, do besides just opening the front end and back end in VS Code? I had problems dragging and dropping them. No problem. Uh, open up the integrated terminal for both of them. NPM I uh, on both and then NPM run start on both. Thanks. NPM, NPM I or yep. NPM install? Okay, hold on. NPM I first and then <laughs> NPM run start. Stephanie, do you have a question? Oh, yeah. Um, so I did set up 
I opened both windows, so front end, back end. I did terminal. I did. Does it matter which one you do NPM I on? Because I did it on front end first. No, you just have to do it on both. I, let me share then, because I, sure. I. Go for it. Yeah. Oh, whoops. Get out of here. Um, so I did over here NPM I, and I did it over here too. And then what will happen? What's the list? Okay, I did. NPM I, and then I, I immediately did NPM run start, and then I did all this. Um, scroll all the way down to the bottom. Oh, okay. <clears throat> um, it looks like it's okay there. So if you go to your front end, do you have any errors? If you go to localhost 3000 in your browser? Uh, do I, do I type npm like run start over here or? No, it's already running. So just switch over to your browser and open up localhost 3000. It should have opened it in the background for you. Uh, I don't see anything open though. So just go to localhost 3000 and see if it loads it. Oh, weird. Okay. All right. Now, did you start with your code or my code? Your code. Okay. So that isn't quite right because my code doesn't have the spinning React logo anymore. Oh. Um, um, so I wonder, do you have another React project running in the background? Or let's let go back to your um, VS code for the front end. Um... Actually, what's this over here? <clears throat> Upstate. That Ooh. might <laughs> be my code. Yep. And so now the two are angry because they're trying to use ports that aren't running uh, or that are used by someone else. So I would go close um, the other one or two that you have open. Danielle, uh -huh. the link to download the zip file is in the daily outline, either from Canvas or from the spreadsheet. Because this one's yours. This one, what is this then? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just gonna close them all out and just start because I don't know. That's the probably blue, not a bad the, idea. Yeah, because the blue one is yours. I didn't get to open <laughs> the back end yet, um, and I can't tell which ones which. So I'll just get rid of all this. Um, <laughs> I'll be back in a second. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Larry, go ahead. And let's see. I get a crash when I try to open the server on the back end. Um, this is your code. Um, scroll up a little bit for me. I wonder if I did something in my database that's causing problems. Uh, role hack up state does not exist. Okay, oh, so this is okay. a step everyone needs to, yep. All right, thank you. So that's a step for everyone is if you go into the DB folder and go to db.js in the SQLized connection string, which is gonna be on line three, it has hack up state at localhost. Uh, go ahead and change that to your username. And let's see if any other hands go down based off of that. Uh, scroll all the way to the bottom, Larry, and make sure the backend oh. server is running, or do you have a different error? Um, hold on. Uh, let's see. Oh, it, it looks like it's working now. Yeah. Beautiful. That, that was the only error that came up for me, too. Yeah, <laughs> everyone who's starting with my zip file will probably have that error. So you want to just swap out hack upstate in db.js for your username. Yeah. Uh, Doug, go ahead. Um, so do we have to do npm install each time we reopen the back end? No, I delete my node modules before I share zip files because node modules is like 230 meg. 
Um, so you don't need to NPM install every time you open the project, but whenever you open someone else's code, if their, if their zip file doesn't include node modules, then you do need to run it. Okay. Thank you. That, that clears that up. No problem. Good question. Stephanie, do you need help again? Um, I just got back to opening both, uh, both windows. Hold on, let me NPM I on the front end. NPM I on the back end. And then I do NPM run start on the back end. And the front end. But before you do it on the back end, make sure you change hack upstate in db.js to your username. Um, so where is the username not found or? No. So in db.js in the back end, mine says hack upstate right here that hack upstate is what you want to replace with your username. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So Stephanie, save. Okay, and then NPM runs are on the back end first? Yes. Okay, and then NPM runs start. <coughs> um... Okay, it, it uh, popped up the browser with the blank page. Good to go. As long as you don't have any errors in your backend console, you should be good. All right, thank you. Nicole, go ahead. We're not supposed to have two pages, right? Just one. Just one. Okay. All right, seven votes in. Let's shoot for eight tonight. I didn't see a poll, so that'll be me. We are at eight, so we will roll forward. Here. Question Max, before yep. you run. Yep, go um, ahead, Danielle. You know, I've been using my Windows. I just switched over tonight to using the Mac, and I need to know how do I find my username on the Mac? So, do you have the Postgres app installed? Uh, yes, I already have that installed. Okay. I just need to know how do I find my user. So oh, if, is it the old username that I would have had? Yes, if you open the Postgres app, um, it should have like a bunch of these databases and one of them will be your username. That's what okay. you want to use. I know. All right. Thanks so much. Um, Danielle, the other thing is, is we ran a create database command for the blog database. So if you start up the back end, even when, after you change it to your username, if you're still having an error there, what you're going to have to do is go to Beekeeper, um, connect in. I'll send you these. Um, I'll send you a screenshot of this. Um, maybe I will send you a screenshot of this. Uh, I just uh, slacked you a screenshot, but if you go in here um, and you need to go to like a query and what you're going to need to do is just say create database uh, blog semicolon and run this command and that will give you the blog database that it will be able to connect to. All right. Thank you. I should be able to catch up to you guys. Thanks. Cool. Okay. Any other questions before we roll forward? Um, yeah, mine's crashed. I'm not sure why. Did you change your username? Yeah. Okay. Go, Go ahead and share the screen. <laughs> okay, scroll up a little bit. You didn't save db.js. Oh, okay. So clear clear it out and start it over? Nope, just click in db.js and save the file. Good to go. Okay. Any other questions?
Okay. So we are actually going to refreshingly not start in the back end for once. We are going to start in our front end. And the reasoning behind that, I know I'm not sharing my screen. Okay. The reasoning behind that is our server.js actually has a whole login component and it's finding the user and it's doing the bcrypt and you know it's it's our login is actually fully functional almost um but we have no we have no react set up in the front end to build all of that out but before we can even build a login page what do we need to set up in our front end in order for our react to support multiple pages Routes. <laughs> routes. And in order to install, uh, in order to set up our routes, we need to install the router. So we're going to actually go to our front end, control C to stop it, and npm install react router dom. And once we install our npm uh, install react router dom, we need to npm run start again because we cannot install new packages before we stop the server. Uh, and then we, after we install the package, we need to restart the server. So control C to stop, npm install react-router-dom, npm run start to get it started back up. We should get our localhost 3000 running again. And now we need to do our setup for our routes. So we need to import three things. And if you are keeping track of steps, super important to keep track of these steps for your capstone, because your capstone, if you have not already set up routes, you will probably need to set them up. Stephanie, I see you. I'll come to you in one second. I'm going to browser. Uh, I'm going to import browser router, router. Uh, I'm sorry. Browser router, route, and route from uh, React router DOM. And then I need to use that in my app. So I'm going to say my browser router is going to contain some routes. And in those routes, we are going to set up a route and we're going to do two of them. Um, we are going to get set up our home and our login. So I'm going to right click on source, new file, and I'm going to say home.js, not hjs. It's a typo, home.js, and I'm also going to create my login.js. And from here, we need to set up our components. So we're just going to say const login. We're going to return a div, and in that div, we'll put an h1 that says login, and we're going to export our default login. And we're going to do the same thing for our home page. We're going to say const home return a div with an h1 in it that says home and export our default home i'm going to see how many things i can fit on my screen all at the same time um, and then finally we need to set up our routes for that so we're going to say in our routes we've got a route that's going to be at the home page and that element is going to be our home component. But we can't just use our home component. We need to also import that component so it knows what file home is in. And finally, we're going to preemptively import our login from our login uh, file. And we are also going to set up a route for the path with slash login. That will have an element of the login screen. <laughs> Last thing I'm going to do in uh, before I take a break and poll, I am going to, in my home, I'm going to import the link from React Router DOM. And then I'm going to add a link to my login. And this is just like an egg tag in HTML, except the link comes right from React Router DOM. And I'm going to put the very creative text login there. 
And we'll leave this up on the screen so you guys can catch up. But what you should have is if we switch back to the browser, we should have a home and a login. And this is all centered and going to annoy the crap out of me. So we're going to come back in to index, uh, I'm sorry, uh, app.css and delete everything out that's in there. So everything in app.css is just going to get deleted. We go back here. Now I've got my home and my login. And if I click the login button, I should get to the login page. So stopping there for polling and questions, uh, launching the poll, and then coming to you, Stephanie, go ahead. I, oh, let me just share. Uh, okay, go ahead. I'm still stuck on this step or just an npm did, run start there. Yeah. And but this is okay. Oh, you npm installed react. You need to npm install react dash router. Oh. Uh I don't know if it actually installed or not. Uh go ahead and just run that command again all on the same line and see maybe it did work. Believe it or not, high six high severe, or the vulnerabilities is okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, it looks like that works. So npm run start. Okay. And you're good to go. Cool. All right, thank you. Yep. Um, did you have your home component? Maybe. Maybe check your app.js and make sure your routes are set up right. Oh, I'm still typing. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, cool. Christy, go ahead. Uh, am I am I muted? But no, I we can hear you. Oh, so so when you so you had us do Control C, then you had us do npm install React, and then we did npm, NPM install React dash router. Uh, React router okay. dot. So how do I? So I did. Um, I only did npm install React. So what do I? <laughs> you don't have to do anything because React's already installed, so that command won't cause any problems for you. So um, I need to npm so install React dash router dash dot. Okay, so npm install React dash router. And then once you have that done, you can npm run start again and catch up on these three files. Okay. Okay. I'm all set. Thank you. Danielle. Okay. I have a question about um, something that VS Code is doing. I don't know why. When I when I'm on line number nine in the login.js file and I type out export default login, it um it like gives me a scroll logical position. Like, <coughs> like it changes it. Go ahead and share your screen. Okay. <laughs> um I don't know why it's doing that. Like I literally type okay, in Okay, so you're in the you're in your home file. So it should be home, not login. Oh, okay. That's why. All right. Thank I, you. I don't know that why it's doing that, but that's but gonna be still, one that part makes of it. A lot, that makes a lot of sense. I'm typing the wrong information in the wrong file. So the let other me thing get just that to, <laughs> together. The other thing to watch out for is import link. The L should be capitalized. Okay, thank you. No problem. Nicole. How come how come we don't have an import link in our login? Because we haven't used the link in our login yet. Oh, okay. That was an easy one. Thank you. We will have uh we actually won't import link in our login, but we're going to use a navigate instead. So you'll be able to see that in, in one minute. Okay, perfect. Danielle, did you have another question or is uh, your hand still raised from last time? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll lower it. Oh, no problem. 
I'm normally good about lowering people's hands for them, but I forgot that time. If you put me on co-host, I can do it. I are. Oh, I had you on co-host, but then you left the meeting. My Zoom had to update and it kicked me off and froze me. You've been co-hosted. I have a, a quick question. Um, when we do the import, what is the dot slash? Um, that is saying it's going to be relative to the current file. So basically we're saying app.css is in the same folder as app.js. So mm -hmm. because of that, we've got a single dot. When we look at something like db.js, we've got a single dot, but then we say db slash db.js. That's mm -hmm. because the db.js file is in a folder called db.js. So the dot slash takes you up a level or down the level? No, or... it, it says in the current level, go find db. Uh -huh. Two dots would say go up a level. Okay. The only way to go down a level is to say D is to say the name of the folder. Okay. Okay. So two dots does take you up. So if for whatever reason we had like, um, you know, uh, APIs and we move server. Nope. Don't do this. Don't follow along with me. I'm just making an example here. If we had like APIs and server.js was in it, what we mm -hmm. would do is um, instead of having one dot, we would say two dots. Hey, db.js, you have to come from server.js up to where the APIs is, mm -hmm. then go to db and then work your way down. So the two dots here would say, hey, go up, up to whatever folder this file is in and then work your way across. Is that like what we did in terminal? Is that like yes. what we did in terminal? Yes. Oh. Okay, okay. Identical to what we do in terminal, same, same syntax there. Okay, thank you. Light bulb moment, like, like seeing that shared. So good work. Good question, Christy. Zach, go ahead. You forgot to npm install your React dash router dash. I fixed one error and then another one immediately popped up. Um, let me see. So control C in your terminal and just npm install React dash router dash dom. Thought I already did that. It's possible you accidentally did it in the back end instead of the front end. Maybe that's the problem. Um, oh. oh. Refresh. Okay, there you go. Okay. Um, and just out of curiosity, what happens if you try to install something when you haven't deactivate or haven't stopped the server? Does it just not install or does it give you an error? Yeah, it just won't let you, it won't execute the command because the server is what's capturing the terminal. Um, so like you'll type it in in the terminal and hit enter and the terminal will be like, well, I'm not listening for a new command to be in, typed in. So I can't do that. Okay. Um, and if you get sneaky and say, oh, I won't stop the terminal, but I'll open the same folder in another terminal um, and install it that way, um, the server may not find the package even though it is installed. Um, so it's just best practice to stop the, the terminal stop the server, uh, run the command and restart the server. Okay. And then um, let me see. So for like home and login under uh, app.js, like import home and import login, you don't have to put home.js or home.login. You can just put the... It will assume a JS file extension. However, it would not hurt if you put .js in there. Um, so if that makes the code easier for you to read, you can put .js in there and the import system will will have no problem with it. So if it was like app.css, you would have to input the, okay. Yep. JS uh, files and NPM packages are the only two that you get off the hook for. Um, they just know how to handle that. 
Shaz, go ahead. You're unmuted, but it sounds like your audio is a little choppy. Your screen share just came through, though. So, yeah. Um, okay, now there we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm missing right so now. So, go to your app.js. So, you're missing your routes in there. Um, and okay. your login.js also needs to be in your SRC or source folder. Okay. Yeah, so just compare your app.js to my app.js and you should get mm -hmm. caught up from there. Okay. Larry, go ahead. All right, you've got uh, the same issue. You get, need to control C out of your terminal and npm install react dash router dash DOM. And when that's done, npm run start or npm start. Depends how lazy you are. All right. Thank you. No problem. All right. We only got one vote on sure did. So talk to me. What do you want me to go back over? Or do we just need some more time? I, I'm not seeing that pop up anywhere for me. Go ahead. More time. Okay, go ahead and share your, your screen, Nicole, unless you're still working on it. Oh, no, I thought you did a poll. I, was, I didn't see the poll anywhere. Oh, I did. If you go to Zoom, down in the bottom toolbar right next to, like, share screen, there should be a button for polls. Or you can call me out and say I'm a liar because I have that button as the meeting host. I don't know if uh, if you guys as students have access to it, but you should have a polls button next to share screen. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't either. And I think mine disappeared. <laughs> no, it looks like only I have it. That's great. Um, wow. Zoom. I had it earlier. I don't have it now. So I don't know if the poll has been removed or not. All right, earlier. here. I'm just going to I'm going to relaunch it. Did it pop up for you guys? Yes. Okay. No. <laughs> oh, was, come on, yes. Zoom. It should be by share screen and record if you have your screen wide enough. Oh, that's a good point. So if you click on more, uh the over on the right, you should have a polls option if you if you can't find the poll. Yeah, it's not in there. <laughs> yeah, all I have is record live script um, apps and whiteboard. And I even clicked in apps to see if maybe I didn't have it, but no, I don't have it. <laughs> Did you click on more? There is no more. For some reason, it's missing from more. Yeah, I don't have more either, but but I did vote in the poll, but it, we don't have that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> There's something to do with, uh, damn, Ariel said she had to update or something. Oh, maybe it's. Are you guys, do you have the Zoom app downloaded on your Mac or is it, are you yeah. in on like the web one? I have the Zoom app, so I probably just need to update it. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you on that one. Yeah, so I didn't have half of these buttons until my update like an hour ago. So oh. now I can relaunch the poll and I polls is next to share, uh, share screen and reactions. But I didn't have that prior. I've never had that button until today. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Good to know you're, I lied. You do have a homework assignment after class that is to update your zoo. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I'm all caught up if that helps with cool. the zoo. Yep. Oh yeah, I did, I'm now I got a poll and I did the poll. Okay. All right, I think we're ready to roll forward here. So let's build out our login screen. So before we do any of this, I need to get Bootstrap working. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new tab, go to getbootstrap.com. I'm going to click read the docs. I'm going to scroll down to the number two step, and I'm going to take this link tag. Because I can hear you guys already screaming of where did he get it, I just copied and pasted it into chat. It is going into our public index.html. Right after the title, we're going to paste in that link. And while we are in here, again, I am in public index.html. I'm going to change my React app to Max's block. Once I have done that, there's one other thing I need to do. I'm going to go back to uh, uh, to Bootstrap. I'm going to take this whole script tag. I'm going to copy that. I'm pasting that into Zoom as well. And then down after my div root, I'm pasting in my script tag. So you should have this link tag and this script tag right after the title and the div root. Again, all of that is setting us up for Bootstrap so that we can use Bootstrap classes in our React HTML. I will also post, no, I also will post, attempt to post that in Slack. Woo. Okay. Zoom apparently does not like to copy and paste. Okay. Once we've got all of that in, I'm going to consolidate some of my files down. So I'm actually going to close out of everything, and I'm just going to work in my login screen. So this is the only thing that we need up to get started. Before you move forward, are we taking that same link and putting it, so it should be using that link twice? No, two different links. One's oh. a script tag link, the other is an HTML, uh, a CSS link. Okay. One starts with link and, and the href ends in .css. The other one is a script tag and ends in .bundle.min.js. We good there? Yeah, I understand now. Okay. So in my app.js, I lied. We're going to do one more thing. In the div class name app, I'm just going to add a container here. So every page we create is wrapped in a container, a bootstrap container. Um, that saves us from having to, to do it on each individual component. If you don't have this, your code is still going to work. This is just going to, to you know contain all of our code, make it a little bit more visually pleasing. So in my login.js, I can actually get started on building out a login form. But in order to practice um, taking HTML code and converting it to React-friendly code, I'm actually going to go to Bootstrap and go to the Forms Overview section and just scroll down because this email address and password is a really good starting point um, for a, a login page that I want to use. So I'm actually going to just copy all of this code, go into my login, and underneath my H1, I'm going to paste all of that in. Now, there are a couple things we need to do to clean up our bootstrap. One of them is React hates input tags that are not self-closing. React wants a slash at the end of every input tag. So what I'm going to do is self-close each input tag by just putting the slash here and here and here. Now, and this is a very common thing, all of my HTML is using class equals. I don't want to use class equals. I want to use class name equals. So I'm going to hit Command F, and I'm going to type in class equal. And then I'm going to hit the little drop down and type in class name equal and hit this replace all button. So when I click this, uh, again, command F is what opens this up. Class equals is what I'm searching for. Class name equals is everything that I want to replace it with. And I'm going to hit this little replace all button. Now that just made all of my classes class names. There's one other thing we need to do for um, 
uh, React JSX does not like because four is a for loop in JavaScript. So instead of four, um, React wants you to use HTML for instead. So we replace any of these fours with HTML four. And finally, we just want to get this looking the way we want it to. This is one of the times that I will let you guys just copy and paste this code. So if you're not saying up, it's okay. We're just doing a, a little cleanup. So this will never share your email with anyone else is dumb. I don't want any email help. So I take it out. This email address, we don't actually use an email address in our authentication. We use a username. So I'm going to change that to username here. And I'm going to say, instead of input type email, I'm just going to make it text. And then finally, our password works. We don't need this check field at all. So I'm going to just take out that whole check area. And then instead of the button saying submit, I'm going to make the button say login. I know we did a lot of that blind, but let's see how our work paid off. If I come in here and look at Max's blog and click onto my login page, I've got a username and a password field and a login button. Leave as much as this up as I can, and we'll start a poll. Again, this is one of the few times I don't think it's a problem to copy and paste. Um, because it's just UI work. Um, but uh, in summary, we went to getbootstrap.com. We were in the form section. The first form section actually has something very similar to what we want. So once we're in here, we copy and paste that code in. We change our email to a username. We change our type from email to text. We do a find and replace and replace any class equals with class name equals. Don't forget your capital N. Then we change any fours to HTML for. And then we remove the checkbox section that we're not going to use and change our submit button to a login button. And I believe that's everything that we did. Mine isn't um, popping up. Can you just check my code and see where you know, I might not have code? Go for it. <coughs> oh, you just have to NPM run start in your terminal. Oh, okay. Maybe you have it running in a different terminal. Go to your login page. Um, yeah, all of that looks good. If you change, if you just say like login to in the button text, or yeah, save that and then go to your 
browser and see if that button shows up and click login. No, you might be on my, um, on my local host 3000 instead of yours. So go back to your terminal, your code and just do your front end code. Is this not what it's supposed to look like? Well, no, we just put, it is, but I'm pretty sure that's mine because we just put in login two in the button and it didn't change. Okay. So um, if you go to your terminal and do an NPM run start, I don't understand. How is your, go back to VS code. Oh, okay. There we go. Cannot resolve react router Dom. That's because you've got a space somewhere in that import. So go to your app.js and you've got a space in the from, uh, right here. Okay. Okay. Now. So <laughs> you've got Max's blog up here. So that's how I know it's definitely mine. Um, Where? In, in your index.html. Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, no, you definitely have oh. Nicole. So you're def you're, you've are you hijacked my 3000 and that's what's showing up. What I'm confused about is how you got the 3000 here. So let me try and stop sharing my server um, come over to this terminal here and hit control C. I don't know if it's going to let you do that. Scroll down to the bottom, maybe. No, see, I think that's mine. So it's not going to let you do that. Um, I just don't understand why it's not seeing a conflicting. There it is. There it is. Okay. Thank you. What did you do? I'm having the same problem. Um, just NPM run start in your terminal and refresh the page. I stopped sharing my terminal and that should have booted my 3000 out. So your 3000 will work. Oh, it changed. Okay. I was like, I couldn't figure that out. Y'all trying to steal my code. I see how it is. I use my own name. That's what was confusing. <laughs> it's all good. Can you right. show us what it's supposed to look like? Yep. Because mine, I don't think it. Login, right. username, password, and the button. Oh, you know why? Because I'm, so do, should I be clicked into that, into? Uh, yep. If you're on your homepage, just click the login link and it will take you over there. What's homepage? Uh, oh, just 3000 with nothing at the end. No, you're saying we should be on the login.js page? Y yes, but if you're on the home page and you click login, your URL will change to slash login, and then you'll see your login.js component. Okay, wait a minute. Type in slash login. Well, okay. If you're in localhost 3000 and there's uh -huh. nothing up here at the top, you should see home and login as a link. I saw login before, but now it disappeared. Okay, so you need to check your home.js file and make sure it looks like this. Okay, home.js, oh, all right. You may have seen it before because you were on my code, not on your code. Oh, okay. All right, we got five votes in, and I promised the last 15 minutes of class for any capstone questions. So I am actually going to stop here for once, a whole 16 minutes early, and open the floor for questions. Those questions can be on any concepts that we covered tonight. Those questions can be anything on your capstone that you're stuck on or need help with. That can be anything where you're like, 
I keep on hearing you say this one word and I still don't understand that concept. This is an open 15 minute office hours style Q and A for anything that pops up. And if there aren't any questions, feel free to either continue working on code tonight or switch over to working on your capstone and we will sit here in silence for 15 minutes unless there are any questions. Nicole, go ahead and kick us off. Can you help me get the buttons? Go like, I want like at least link one of my pages to the other. I know we kind of just did it, so I've got a good, good idea, but I might as well get one. In your capstone? Yeah. Yeah, try it, try it on your own. And if you're struggling, just uh, share your screen and come off mute and we'll work on it. Okay. But like, you know, set up your project, try it yourself and, and you know, see if you run into issues and then we'll jump into that if you do. Uh, and okay. oh, one good thing to mention as you're switching between projects, make sure to shut down all of your servers, your front ends, your back ends, your everything before you pull up your capstone and work on something else. Because otherwise, your capstone could be trying to talk to your blog back end and, and it could be a recipe for disaster. So just make sure that you've closed out of everything and you've control seed all of your servers or just close the whole VS Code window to make sure you don't run into any conflicts. Christy, go ahead. Uh, I think, wait a minute, I just, I messed something up. Let me see. Okay, never mind. My error went away. I got it. Good work. Thank you. <laughs> Now my, <laughs> me again. So my login popped up, I clicked on login, but now my login is spread across the entire page and it's really big in. So in your app.js, you want to add that class name container. Okay. It's still gonna be really big and really ugly, but it won't be super, super big. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. I see it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Me again. So for every page that we have, we have to um, import it first from the app JS first. Sure. Like do. So if I have like 10 pages, I got to import 10 pages. We have 416 in our app at work. Lordy Jesus. All right. <laughs> Actually, we don't have 416 pages, but we do have 416 components. Okay. Uh, okay. Me again. Uh, I didn't think. Okay, I didn't realize that there was an index.html. So that is just for you to bring in like bootstrap and other elements, yes. but not. You yes, you should not be ever editing index.html unless you need to modify the head section or have some external JavaScript running. So index.js, although it's very tempting to just copy and paste some of your HTML code written outside of it in there, you don't want to do that, right? That is just the, the wrapper that the React code injects itself into. So index.html should only ever be used for the head or the, um, for like pulling in bootstrap, modifying the head, or for some external JavaScript that's supposed to be executing. And last thing, real yep. quick. Tell me again, browser, browser, router, route, and when we added the route, that was? In app.js. Right, but what was that? Did that's React? You said that was... is a, that's React router, which is a React package that allows us to have multiple pages in our React app. Okay, 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 okay. So it's not native to React. It's not built into React itself. That's why we had to NPM install it. But I cannot tell you 
the last time I have had, I've used the React app and not installed React Router. It's actually kind of shocking that React does not have a router built into it. Okay, gotcha. Danielle, go ahead. Okay, I have a question about my capstone. Um, I'm trying to connect my uh, domain name to my repository in GitHub. I'm on the pages section and it's giving me back um, an error message. And so I think I've skipped a step. Ooh, that sounds like a good question for Nathan, but I'm going to try and answer it for you anyway. <laughs> Go ahead and share your screen. All right. Uh, let's see here. It says my site is published, but it also says DNS check in progress. So, okay. So when you open that, what happens? Nothing. Like it doesn't go to my site. Okay. So the step that you missed is that over at Namecheap, you need to modify your DNS to be aliasing to your GitHub name. Okay. So um, I'm at Namecheap. Sign and in, go to uh, click on your safe child manage. Okay. And then you're going to go to advanced DNS. Mm, where do you see that? Oh, there. Yep. Okay. You got it. And what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down a little bit. You're going to delete um, the C name record for parkingpage.namesheet.com and hit yes. And then you're going to add a new record. And it's I'm pretty sure it's going to be an alias record. And then this is where you would have to look up. Did Nathan provide any documentation for like other than in class the video of how to do this? Yeah. Yes. Um... So that is what you would need. Uh, Danielle, for your next step is you would just need to know what to set the host and the target to. I'm pretty oh. sure the host is going to be either an at sign or www. And then the target is going to be something like your GitHub username dot GitHub dot IO. That yeah. makes sense. I knew I had forgotten a step. Okay, thank I'm you. Pretty sure that's and then one other thing to mention is when you're done in here, you have to hit the green check mark over on the right. It's not super obvious, but you I have to like it. click that for it to save. And then I oh. lied. One other thing that could take up to 24 hours for it to work. DNS is so frustrating because like it isn't instantaneous. Um, and it's like one of those things that you don't know if you did it right until you wait 24 hours and see if it works. Um, so that's, that's uh, where you can go from there. All right, thank you so much. It's not a complete answer, but hopefully it's an answer to get you started. Yep, pointing me in the right direction. Beautiful, it's what we like. Nicole, go ahead. Another quick one. Um, in my import, yours is different because it has the dot slash login. By mine, it just auto does it. So it has dot components dot cars dot. It has all of them. Is it supposed to be like that or should in my app.js or should I? That's make fine because you've got your components in a separate folder. So you've got, it's basically just going down all of the folders, right? So it's like app.js is outside of the components folder. So it's going into the components folder and then it's going in a folder called login and then it's going in and getting the login.js file. Okay, and just to go with that, um, it's is it always double quotes or is it single quotes? Doesn't matter. Oh, then how come when I do a single quote, um, it gets light? Like the colors are light. Mm. I don't know. Nope, single quote doesn't matter. Although if you save it and have prettier on prettier, we'll change it from a single to a double quote. Oh, okay, that's what I made mean. Um, but you should be able to do a single quote. The only time it will turn light is if um, you import the component without using it. And what does that mean? Uh, so if you if you like import login, but don't use login down here, 
this is going to turn light because I didn't actually use the login component in this return down here. So like so I imported it, I told React, hey, I would like to use my login, but then because I never used it down here or I commented it out, that's why it's light up here. Oh, but it's still okay to have there though. Yeah. It's still okay to have there, but now if you look in your console, it's going to say login is defined, but never used. Because oh. we imported it here, it's light up here, but because it's not being used down here, it's like, why am I bothering to import this if you never use it? Right. Got it. Thank you. So yeah, it won't hurt anything. That's why it's a warning and not an error, but it is best practice to not import things that you're not using. Zach, go ahead. Oh. Okay, so instead of using a hrefs, uh, well, two ways to fix this. One, you can put http colon slash slash at the beginning of it, that. I'm going to give you three ways to fix this, sorry. Uh, save that and uh, go test it. Uh, refresh the page, just in case. Okay, that's fix one. Fix two. Uh, is you don't actually have to specify localhost 3000. So if you just um, take out that whole thing in, uh, and leave the slash at the beginning, it will assume that whatever link you're going to is on the same URL. So that's the second improvement is um, not including that because when you deploy, your URL won't be deployed to localhost 3000 and that's going to cause some problems. So if it's better to actually leave it generic there. The third thing, and this is going to be an optional, is that you should, because you're in React, you should be using the link tag instead of the A tag. Um, it's a little bit more efficient. Um, and that link tag, you can look at the login link that we did earlier tonight to switch it over to that. Um, you're just going to do, you're going to import the link. You're going to use a uh, link instead of A. And then instead of href, you're going to say two. Okay. Yeah. I, um, I wasn't sure what to do because I have styling on the buttons and I wanted to keep that. So the, the link tag should let you keep on using class name. Okay. So link at uh, the um, href becomes two. And then you need to uh, import curly braces link from React Router DOM at the top of your file. I'm sorry, what was that again? Uh, import curly braces link. And if you just hit, and oh, go back, delete the K or the N and the K, or just type the K. When it auto completes, so type N and K now. Um, if you hit enter on that, the top suggestion will oh, auto okay. import the rest of it for you. I mean, you could have typed it in, but um, that should work the same way. And the reason why we do that, this is super technical, but instead of it having to like load the whole app again, the link just swaps out the two components. Oh, um, Oh. oh, I spelled the A. Yeah. Um... Uh, but you still need the closing link there. Uh, uh, you don't need the, the delete out the less than sign. No, no, no. Yeah. Just where the squiggly is, delete that one. There you go forgot password is between the opening link and the closing link. You are good to go. Sweet. Link tags Thanks. do work in React apps, That's but it is preferred that you use link tags instead of A tags uh, because it fights the router a little bit less. It's a little bit more native to the router. Thanks. Yeah, like I said, I just um, 
wasn't sure how to combine the link in the or replace the um a tag with a link tag so thank you have a good one larry yeah no problem and a, a good question i'm glad you asked it good example for everyone christy go ahead um okay my question is so if you have um if you have uh, something that just has uh, index.html and CSS, and you want to make it into like a, a front end, uh, you would just follow the same steps and just create a front end in what you already have. Yep. So we've yeah. built plenty of, you're saying without React, right? Well, no, that's what I was going to say. So then once you add the front end and then you want it to have like maybe a home page and then like um, other pages, then you would bring in the uh, router. It depends. Yeah. Are you are you saying, are you asking how to get a React project started or are you asking how to build a front end without using React? I guess I want, so you can't do, you can't have multiple pages without React, right? No, of course you can. We built our portfolio site with multiple pages without having React. That's what I thought. So if you add React, is that easier? It depends on your project. If you're making API calls and you're going to have a lot of data that's showing up in, as part of your interface, yeah, it's probably easier to do a React project. But if you're just building out a static website that doesn't have a database and, you know, it's just a, a standard website that, that's not using an API, it's probably easier to not use React. So then we, if you do that, how do you have the multiple page? You just create a new file called, uh, you know, project1.html, and then you use an ahref and link to it. Okay. And then... For what was my other question? I gotta, I think I know the answer to my other question, but I gotta sit with what you just said for a second and I might be back. Okay. Yeah, you, you, wanna, you wanna separate out. React is not something that you can just say, oh, I'm halfway through my front end and I've decided I wanna use React now, right? React is kind of an all or nothing some someone a, a React expert would come a React expert would come at me and say, no, you can do you know individual pages in React, but it's not normally a good idea. So React is something where you have to say at the beginning of the project, is this something that I want to use React with? And if it mm -hmm. is, I'm gonna create React app that's gonna give me my index.html, my index.js, and my app.js. Then I'm going to install the router and set up app.js and set up my routes. And then I can start creating my components. That's what we did tonight, right? We already created React app before, but that's what gave us our app.js file. We created our home. We got the router set up. We did all of that stuff. However, you don't have to use React for every project. There is a reason why we teach HTML before we teach React, right? So if right. you said, oh, I don't have a database for this website, I don't have API calls that I'm doing, I just want to make a web page, at that point, no, it doesn't probably make sense to use React. You would just create your index.html, and then you would create, you know, page1.html, and then in your ahref, you would just say href equals, quote, page1.html, and when you clicked on it, it would take you there. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I I just I have a um I I made a web a website um with just HTML and CS, CSS because after we did it just to see if I could do it and so I was just asking because I, I don't really have a plan for it but I was just curious um and now that you told me now that I know that <laughs> there's an index.html I wanted to change that too okay. Yeah, in oh. general, index.html is not something you want to be doing a ton of work in in a React app because you want React to do all the heavy lifting in the React app, which is app.js. But for an HTML site, yeah, you would want your A tags. 
Okay, now 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 I thought of what my next question was. So for oh, if you have okay, so the full stack, then you're gonna have React. If you don't need, if you if it's not necessary for someone to log in, so say that you have a home page. So I have my home page, and then you come and you see the home page, and then you go beyond the home page, and then there's like a second page. You don't you don't have to have login. No. Okay. Yeah, that was my other. That was my last question. Okay, thank you. No, you just need to, you need to think about, well, how am I going to manage the data, right? So in, in the blog, I'm thinking about, well, I don't want anyone to be able to create a blog post, but I want everyone to be able to read a blog post. So I need some control over that to, to say, hey, who's allowed to create blogs, blog posts? Um, and so that's why I've got a login screen on mine and, and what we'll we'll start building out tomorrow um, because we want to be able to control, hey, not anyone should be able to make a blog post. Well, what if you have links that they could click, but not necessarily stuff for them to write? So you just have to you just have to can you just have to think through what do I want the end user to be able to do versus right. what do I want? only me to be able to do okay and if you have oh i only want you know me to be able to do this you have to think through well how do i know it's me who's able to do it oh okay so if i want to if i want to so i don't want anyone to be able to write anything but if they see something that they like i can set it up so that they can like something right well but then then they how do you know who they are you would need them to log in so you know who is liking what. What I, do I, I mean, if I want to know, you mean? No, I'm saying if you go to Amazon right now and you click on right. add to wish list, Amazon's right. going to say, well, whose wish list do you want me to add this to? You've got to be signed in so we know whose wish list is, is you know, we're storing this in. Uh, yeah, you know, you're making me think, but I, I just wanted to share. I didn't want to be interactive. Okay. Well then you could, you could make a link on your product to link it out to Amazon and then it's Amazon's problem. Well, right. Or, or whomever, whatever other website that they go to. Correct. I'm just, well, what, I'm just sharing. What you need to think of is, well, where do I go when I want to add a new favorite thing to my website? How do I add a new favorite thing to my website? Do I want to go into Beekeeper and add a row into the database? Or do I want to have some interface where I can have a form built on my website that's only accessible to someone who's logged in? Hmm. Well, can I just log in and I'm the only one who yeah. changes it? Yeah. Nobody else can log in? Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Nicole, go ahead. I need a whiteboard. <laughs> okay. So I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. So, okay. So I have a header page, right? But that should be my home page because I have all my, my nav bars in my header page. But in my, in my, in my home page, I did an import header and then I did mm -hmm. the dot dot header slash. That's okay. Mm -hmm. So, so if the I whole, wanted, that's one of the benefits of React is that you can have one header file that you can use on multiple pages. Okay, right. I know that, but link to import from header. Okay, I was trying to not forget my <laughs> question, so I wrote it down. Kind of, um, yeah. So I understand that, but so for how do I know that this is like my home page then? It just says localhost like 300. It's not like a slash home page. That's going to be like, controlled in your routes. Oh, so I need another link in here or a route in there. So if you look at my routes, my I've got a route path slash that takes me to my home page. Then I've got mm -hmm. a slash login that takes me to my login page. Right. I have I have both those two. Okay. So that's how when you just have localhost 3000, that slash with nothing after it is how it knows to go to your homepage. 
Oh, okay. Okay. Cause I'm like, okay. I just wanted to make sure. Th this is kind of like saying like index.html kind of. Mm -hmm. Right. When you do, when you have that empty slash in there, that empty slash is what's saying that's going to be at my home page. Okay. Perfect. And that was kind of, yeah. And then just for the rest of the pages, do I need a route for all of the pages there? Yep. That's it. So I'll just work on my routes and my just linking everything together. All right. Thank you, Max. And if I have, if so, wait quickly. Am I the last one? Okay. I don't know. But, um, Oh, so everyone I, else I here, you're welcome to stick around. We're 10 minutes over class time. So if you want to peace out, you can. You don't don't feel obligated to stick around. You do not get bonus points for, for being here late. So okay, I have sorry, a, ahead, a Nicole. I have a button on my header. So I have a register, like for the register login. Um, if I wanted to click on that and take it to my login page. Um, would that still just be in my my route? Or so would that be a you would you would need to import link from React Router DOM in your navbar. You would link that to your login page, and then you would make sure that you already have a route for your login page. So whatever you put in this path right here. Mm -hmm. is what needs to line up in your two right here. Okay, so log in to, how would that look? It would just, so the link to, that's all it is from, yep. from my homepage, right? So that's the homepage, I'm just trying to see. Homepage, and then a link to login, and then can you just click on your login so I can commit this memory? Oh, this is and just then... the, the whole login screen. Okay, where did you go just from that? It was from the app yes. so For the router path to the to the home path, which is a link to the login, back to the login. Yes. Got it. All right, thank you. Christy. Good night, Mike. Oh my God. Have a good one, Nicole. Uh, okay, so is it possible for someone to, like, uh, for, for example, if you on Syracuse.com, if you want to leave a comment, you, you got to sign in. You do? Sure do. I would be shocked. I, so I thought if you put your name in your, so you, it can't be like you put your name and you put your email, their email, then that's not the same thing. Well, no. Well, just entering their email, they could type in anything. They could type in fake at email.com. Okay. Okay. And there's right. Cause we don't have a, I don't have a way to run, run it. And I didn't think that, I didn't think that all the way through. I was like, log in. Cause I just didn't think like, why would they log in? Because it, I thought I was more or less displaying something. Well, you can, if, if all you're, if all you're doing is displaying and you don't make it interactive, they don't need to log in. You can send them to Amazon and have them figure out, you know, making them create an Amazon account, or you can send them to Macy's or you can send them to wherever, right? Like you don't, but as soon as you have an interactive element, you need to think through, well, am I keeping track of who is interacting with the website? I, I, I have a, a message out to Mel because when I was talking the last time he sent me a message and said that something about he did something similar and that if somebody comes on my page and then they click on the link and they purchase something then um I guess the company he he, he didn't elaborate because it was just in the message so I'm waiting for him to let me know when he has some time but that's why I kind of thought it was more of like a click thing where they come on my page and because I have links for that's basically advertisement for another site, then they would click on that link and it would take them to that site. And then if they ordered something or if they wanted something, they would, because it's just my favorite thing. Right. Um, so again, let me, let me wrap all of this up. You do not need a login page if they are going to click a link to another site. 
they only need a login page if you are if they are interacting with the site and posting content. Can okay. you show her an example of your blog of your setup? Like remember that? So like that was an example. So like on my um uh, I don't have that server running. I, I saw that. I saw I'd, that earlier. Where I'd you, have to switch it over, but they can. Class? Yep, they can click. Anyone can go to my blog and read my blog posts. But okay. if someone wants to post a new blog to my site, they have to log in first. Now I'm going to be the only one with a login initially, right? I don't want anyone else to be able to post to my blog. Now, eventually, I may want to make it so other people can log in and, and post that as well. But I don't want to have a comment section on my blog and let people post comments unless they have signed, have registered for an account and have signed in and gone through all of that. I could make it so anyone could post a comment, but then how do you do moderation? Right. So again, you can, you don't have to do a login. Anyone can go to your favorite thing site and, and you can be the only one with a login to post new favorite things. But once you cross that comments line, you are now making the site interactive. So you need to think through that interaction because oftentimes when someone interacts with the site, you want them to have an account beyond interacting with the site, just reading the data, right? I'm saying interactive in terms of them being able to post comments or to create new things or whatever it is. And I even leave a review saying, hey, Christy, you know, this was awesome. I would love to, you know, buy these things. That nature. Yep. Okay, I got it now. I got something to think about and work with. And oftentimes on a site, if I'm on amazon.com, right? And I just click into something and click on whatever, here's everything. Um, and let me just pick a size. But when I go to check out, immediately to a login screen. Right. If I go to go to the reviews, there isn't even, oh, write a customer review. If I click on that, immediately to a login screen. Right. Right. So Amazon is is gladly showing me their entire database with all of these products. But the second that I go, oh, I want one of those products, I have to sign it. But, but I, I guess I'm thinking in terms of I, I'm more advertisement than I am sales. That's fine. So as long as you don't put a comment section or a review section on your site, then you don't need a sign in. Okay. Yeah, because Oprah in her magazine, you just see the things and, and then you can go to the site, but you don't, she she doesn't care if you, you know, like what you have to say about what's her favorite things. Um, but it's a, this is in the magazine. It's not, it's not on the website. So I don't know how this is translating, but okay, I, I'm going to think about it and I will. Um, come up with more. Okay. To be continued. Everyone have a good night. <laughs> Zach, did you have a question? Okay. Any other questions from anyone? I don't know why I just singled you out. Your video just came on. All right. Have an awesome night, everyone. I'll see you. You too. You too.